I was literally crying when I was beating up Georgie, when everyone was screaming at me, because if you leave yourself open or vulnerable in a moment like that, with all the men screaming at me to pummel another man who is in the Union Army, who should be on my side, it can sweep you away with uh, the absolute tragedy of the entire thing. You may be winning a fight, but what have you lost? You dirty coward! That's enough! Hello everyone, it's History Boy, and today I am absolutely honored to present to you a fantastic interview that I had the pleasure of conducting with an absolute gentleman, Thomas F. Wilson, who played Biff in Back to the Future, and Thomas Sweet in the 1996 Civil War epic, Andersonville. Without further ado, please enjoy the interview, and thank you, Mr. Wilson. Could I start with my questions here? Go right ahead, whatever you'd like. Filmings like we filmed Andersonville are um, are difficult work to begin with. I'm I'm not by any sense saying that they're like going to war, but they are uh, hot, sweaty, difficult, um, and you get to work when it's dark outside, and you get home when it's dark outside again. So. There's a lot of time to be together, working hard. So camaraderie is um, it is bound to happen. Uh, it happens, I think, in most movies, but in a particular sense, in Andersonville, it happened, and uh, everyone got along, and there was a great deal of camaraderie. It would be crazy to think that a man like John Frankenheimer would not direct the film. Uh, to a T, to whatever vision he had for the film. He, di he did direct The Manchurian Candidate, but he directed many, many interesting movies um, and, and groundbreaking movies. He, he directed a movie called Seconds with Rock Hudson. Um, he directed a great movie that won the Academy Award called The Train. He directed uh, The Birdman of Alcatraz. So he directed many, many excellent movies. And he was, at that time, you know, an, an, an aging director, but he was still uh, a very, very particular director, and at times, at, well, n not infrequently, a, a quite a difficult director. He was a stern taskmaster to his crew uh, and his cast many times, uh, but, but for good reason. He, he had a magnificent eye a tremendous ear for what's going on in the scene and uh and he wanted it portrayed the way he the way he thought it might be or should be and 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 uh and he did just that you tell him to drive around sir as long as there's no cavalry <laughs> Academy Awards, Emmy Awards, all sorts of, you know, he was, uh, he was quite a director. I made friends that, that are, are friends to this day with many of them. I mean, Ted Marcoux is a wonderful guy and a tremendous actor. Um, Jared Emick, of course, was, uh, was tremendous in the film. Uh, so all these, uh, there, there's so many names there. Um, um, Bill Sanderson was in the movie. Um, William H. Macy uh, was in it. Jan Trischka. So many people, that, uh, it was wonderful to work with them, to, uh, to work with actors that I admire so much. I mean, Jared had won the Tony Award. Uh, uh, Bill Macy won award. I mean, uh, Jan Trischka from um, the Czech Republic. And, and Jan, Jan and I got along very, very, very well. Uh, he played Henry Wirtz, as you know, in the film. I 
truly think it was, though it was a relatively small role in Andersonville. Uh, he pl- Henry Wirtz played a very large role in the actual Andersonville, and Jan Trischka had, a, had an important role, but not as much as the prisoners and the escape and all those things. But Jan uh, gave one of the finest performances maybe that I've ever seen. Where is my driver and halter? What? You don't care? No rations today unless the goddamn thief returns what he stole from me! If you are digging tunnels, you will suffer the consequences! Tunnels are useless! Even if you are outside, I give any two men a 12 hour start and then track you with the dogs and you will suffer the consequences. They must be much, much better. And this, what you call marching, you will drill them until it's dark or after dark, if necessary. They must be perfect tomorrow. Absolutely, sir, they will be. Oh, Colonel. Absolutely, too, Colonel. I am fully qualified. To what? To allow this disgrace to civilization? Colonel, please, you must not speak like this in front of my men. Uh, here soon enough. No, I'm no, filing no, no, my Colonel, report. Colonel, please, there are things I must say to you, but not in front of the man. We must talk. Please. Colonel. Please. Thank you. In the scene where uh, Bill Macy, uh, uh, William H. Macy, is sort of interrogating him about the conditions at the prison. And Jan is explaining to him, and he's explaining away these difficulties of the prison. I mean, it's just absolutely magnificent. I will report to the government what I think the general's responsibilities are. If you would like to discuss your own responsibilities for the deaths of more than 100 men in your care a day... I only meant that... You, Captain, you... In one week, you could have finished a dam across the stream, made floodgates to flush out the waste. You could have built an- another camp to relieve the crowding. But you see, we have no tools. I asked for source and access. You have hunt, some tools, Captain. I... I took inventory. Absolutely a tremendous piece of acting by Young, who's a great artist. I'm most respectfully... Uh, please, you, you must tell them there is no one. Absolutely no one in this war who has to deal with the circumstances I have to deal with. You have seen. You know that. But please tell them I do not complain. I'm a soldier, Colonel. I know my duty, and I fulfill it faithfully. Look at this arm of mine, shattered in the Battle of of Seven Pines. Yes, you are a soldier, Captain. So when you personally ordered the stocks to be built and the ball and chain, for escaped prisoners. you knew you were violating the Articles of War, as you knew you were violating them when you had food withheld from prisoners as punishment. Now, was there anything else you wanted to say? It's true, Colonel. Of course it is. It's all true. I know it will not surprise you that I agree with everything what you say. But I try, Colonel. I try very hard. Look at those young boys in the Fife and Drum Corps out there. I paroled them so they wouldn't have to stay in that wretched stockade. I ordered the hospital moved out, outside of war, where the air is cleaner. I ordered the stockade made bigger. But you know the problem. They just sent us all the time more and more prisoners on General Winder's orders. 33,000 now, when we were built for only 8,000. So, of course, I agree with you. With the proper help, we can do much more. Can you help us there, Colonel? The problem is, I need 
Bieber. You know, perhaps if I was major instead of only captain, then I would have more staff assigned to me and we could start to solve those problems together. They listen to you in Richmond, Colonel. So I think if you put that recommendation in your in your report, it would be most definitely helpful. He was magnificent, magnificent. We were filming outside of Atlanta, and I had bought a bicycle there. Uh, I usually, when I'm, I love riding the bicycle, so if I go on a location, <clears throat> I'm not near my bicycle, and I'm in the hotel for a number of weeks. So I'll buy, a, you know, a relatively inexpensive bicycle just to just to kind of tool around town and go out and get something to eat. Anyway, Jan, who was, you know, quite proper and quite European, he just loved that idea. He just loved the fact that I had a bicycle and, and that I would do something like that. And I told him, well, Jan, you know, you could use my bike. I mean, any time you want, you know, you could just, I mean, I'm on the set all the time. You Sometimes I have seen you don't have these. He, he was very proper. Oh, I, I, Tom, I couldn't do anything like that. I said, Jan, look, it's not an expensive bicycle, and I really want you to to use it. So, so I gave him um, the key to my room, and I said, anytime you want. What do I have, Jan? I have socks on the floor, and I have a TV and a bed. I mean, it's not no big deal. So go in, take the bicycle. And, uh, and ride all around Peachtree City, Georgia. So this, you know, this guy from the Czech Republic is taking my bike and riding to Chick-fil-A on, on a borrowed bicycle. And he was so <laughs> thankful for that, <laughs> that we became good friends. And by the end of it, Jan was, he almost unscrolled, uh, uh, you know, some parchment paper in order to share with me his great appreciation of using this bicycle during the filming of Andersonville. But we, we got along very well and he rode my bike. And at the end of at the end of the film I was done, so I had this bike, so we raffled it was it was near Christmas, so we raffled it off for charity at the hotel we were staying at. I put it I put it in the lobby of the hotel with a sign that said, you know, buy a buy a chance at the desk for this to win this bicycle and at the end, we'll give, um, you know, we'll give all the money to the local homeless shelter and somebody will get a bike for Christmas. So that worked out fabulously well. That is the long, arduous story of my bicycle on Andersonville. <laughs> okay, so let me get this straight. The, uh, the commandant of Andersonville Prison was loaned a bike by a Union prisoner. That's correct. <laughs> that, he, that he enjoyed immensely. Those who are not shot are caught by the dogs without fail and put in the stocks or ball and chain. At this point, the fanciful clouds that seem to surround a thing called method acting have kind of been confused a little bit. So when you say method acting, it's difficult to know anymore what a person means since so many people have talked about it and occasionally they've talked about it in such ways that you think well they might be talking about a completely different thing than than i think of it first of all at the audition for andersonville john frankenheimer saw on my resume that i'd worked in improvisation that i'd done improvisational theater that i'd done stand-up comedy all this stuff and he, and he said I'm very interested in this improvisational work you've done. Uh, do you, are you willing to improvise within this script? I said, certainly, absolutely. I, 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 and I told him, and I still remember the line because I got a laugh out of him. I said, I, I improvise uh, for all of my directors in everything I've ever done, often to their chagrin. So he <laughs> laughed at that, meaning that, you know, sometimes I just 
make it up a little as I go in, go along. I don't make it up a lot as I go in, along because they're paying me money to actually do a job. And, but sometimes I will improvise within certain parameters, and occasionally they love that, and occasionally they hate it. There were improvisational elements within Andersonville, but within a big script like that and a big story that is trying to reflect uh, the historical reality of the prison itself, yes, we had, a, we had a story to tell and we had a script to stick to. So all of those things being what they are, I guess as an actor, sometimes I'm a method actor and sometimes I'm not. Because sometimes you are able to, to really fly by the seat of your pants and create a real reality within a scene with another actor. And it's, uh, and it's thrilling, and sometimes it's a work of genius. happen and be successful, uh, I don't think you can say, suddenly it is actually 1860 and I am a prisoner in a jail. Um, it would be very difficult to do that and do, do both things convincingly. So I guess the short answer, you know, you know my, my long verbose answer, but my short answer is, sometimes you're a method actor and sometimes you're not. Graybacks, what, what's that? In here, we call lice graybacks. We uh, brace them and bet on them. We call Johnny Reb grayback, right? Well, in here, we call lice grayback. And Johnny Reb, lice. Oh, that gets better every time I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> the conditions were very, very difficult. Um, you would get, I mean, from the very beginning of the morning, when you went to work, your feet would actually, actually be soaked through with mud and water. It, it wasn't freezing like it wasn't wintertime, but in that kind of mud and water overnight, your feet were very cold and, uh, and very wet all the time. Until some of us, myself included, actually went to a store and we bought um, fisherman's socks that were waterproof. So we would have these socks, and then we would put those socks into giant, like, um, trash bags, trash bags up our pant legs, <laughs> and then we would put over the socks and the trash bag, we would put our, our feet into the, um, into the uniform shoes, which were made specifically for the production using the literal, the Union Army wooden foot models where they how they made the shoes then so our shoes were uh were as i say made on the exact molds and to the exact um specifications 
of the shoes and uniforms of the Union soldiers at the time. They built this whole place downstream from their tents, horses, dogs, everything. So they do whatever they do in the water, even before it gets down to us. You're seeing a tenth of what we do to it once it gets down here. They do everything in there. That's why this place has such a stink to it. Don't worry. You won't notice it after a couple of months. You think they got kids watching us here? Yeah, the Rebs are running out of men. They're robbing the cradle and the grave to guard us. Hey, Johnny. You got something to eat? Yeah, I got something to eat. What you got? Got two ears of corn. I'll give you a dollar for them. Yankee greenback for both ears. You come over here. Not me. I'm not coming over there. Why not? Because it's the deadline. You'll shoot me if I do. You want some or not? All right. Here I come. Hey, wait. I'm... Shoot you for fun in here? They did shoot them for fun in there, which is unfortunate. Andersonville gave uh, our culture the term deadline. Right. That came, when you have a deadline and you must meet that certain time to finish your paper or whatever it is, that actually came from Andersonville and the literal deadline. After Andersonville, that became a term. Oh, you have a deadline. <laughs> uh, also, a pup tent. Have you ever heard that term? Yes, yeah. When you have a pup tent, you're camping and the scouts will go out, you'll put up a little pup tent. That came from Andersonville as well, because at one point, the prisoners started to call out, uh, you know, we're being treated no better than dogs in these tents, and they would bark, the whole, the whole prison yard would bark inside the tents like they were dogs. And so they started calling them their pup tents. So before we did the movie, we each got a like a three-ring binder, but of the thickest variety. So we got about we got it, it, historical writings, three or four inch thick stack of paper to go through with all of the historical references, the history of the prison, uh, and all of those things. There were a number of uh, historical consultants on, on the movie. I've never been a part of, of, of a film that tried to be closer historically to the actual. I mean, all of the names came out of the record book. Right. There, there was a Thomas Sweet. There was actually a man named Limber Jim. <laughs> that was his actual name. <laughs> Next time it'll be me and you, Limber Jim. Yes, one fine day. <laughs> uh, yeah, who actually gathered them together and made a big speech. Limber Jim actually raised up the entire camp and said, we can take them over. Let's fight these raiders. And Limber Jim led the rest of the, you know, the starved prisoners in that takeover. Look at these vultures. Just waiting to rob and murder the new boys. Look at them. these stinking cowards. Jim. Jim. Jim, there's a thousand of them. Come on. They have clubs and knives. We have nothing. Who's with me? Who? Who? Who's with me? Who? 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 Who's with me? I, I'm with you, Jim. We're with you. We're Who? with you. Who? You want? Get out! 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 Get out!
I mean, they all, as you know, they, they almost lynched the Raiders. <laughs> but no, the leaders said, no, we will, have, we will have a military tribunal within the walls of this camp. And the film used the records of the trial. Is there anyone here who saw one of these six commit murder? Yes! Or order another to commit murder of another federal soldier? To steal his goods? Or for any other reason? If so, and he will swear to it, let him come forward now! I swear! I swear! I swear! I swear! I swear. Hope day. In fact, it wasn't exactly real. It was precisely real. You tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. You can sit. Hope day.